Good evening and welcome back here to the shop in Canterbury, New Hampshire. I've been thinking a lot lately about how to understand woodworking more. Like if you were gonna introduce somebody to woodworking, how could they best grasp the nature of the material and get their legs under them on how to approach it with some tooling? So, especially hand tools. So tonight, we're gonna make a spoon. <laughs> <laughs> They're a lot of fun and it, it would probably be a good lesson to, to teach a younger child. And you know, sometimes the simplest of things are the things that really weaved together a family and a memory because every time mm. you pull open that drawer to stir that pot of your favorite stew, you're going to reach for that spoon you made with a grandchild or a child and just remember that that special time this is kind of a wimpy one it's got a round handle and a very flat kind of spoon area and you can see it's very lightly dished out i want to make a spoon that's worthy of your time and mine so we're going to design it with a little more movement to the handle and a little deeper bowl in there so that if you want to take a little taste of whatever you're making you'll be able to easily do that that's one style check this one out a friend gave me this years ago <laughs> and uh pretty funky but it's the kind of spoon you know i guess you're gonna stir but not intentionally try to pick anything up <laughs> it's like the ones with all the holes in them to the strainer but this is uh, this is to only strain like um, roasting apples. <laughs> I don't know. It looks like a little apple or a heart right in there. It does. But check that out, how delicate and thin he went with this. I mean, it is, um, it's not even a sixteenth, like at the thinnest spot right there. But it's held up nicely. Of course, I really haven't used it. I've kept it in my office as a little keepsake because it's beautiful, really. Mm -hmm. But the reason he was able to go so thin with it is because the tree, the fibers are the green of the, the fibers of the tree actually took a bend right here. And so the, the log was actually rived or split along the grain. So when it split, it came down and it made a little J shape. And then he took the spoon from there. So you end up with this really strong fiber here making the bend. It's, it's stronger than it looks, okay? We're not going nearly this light and delicate. This is the first spoon. We're just gonna chill out a little <laughs> bit. And we're not gonna have that kind of hook on it. But what a difference, huh, from Mr. Flatbody over here. Um, but the way you achieve that is you have to have a chunk of material like this. And I was cutting some firewood a couple years ago, and I set this aside with another piece. It's actually a piece of sugar maple. It's, it's in good shape. It's got this, these knots on this side. I hope that doesn't interfere too much. But you can see if that gets sawn or split, uh, it'd be tough to split maybe with that knot. So I'm thinking of sawing it just following the grain right around the corner and using it to get a, a, like a ladle. Um, you know, it would be really nice to make a deep dished ladle. Now we're not going to this extent today but we are going to use some homegrown wood actually some chunks of wood that were on my sister's firewood pile my sister uh, did not realize that it was cherry and they had cut down a tree um, out along the backwoods that had been dead for a while you can tell because I mean look at the there were all kinds of bugs in the bark this was while it was standing there so they cut it up and they chopped it up and it was actually quite nice the cherry and I think the ants had already gotten in it prior to being cut down so I did chunk up a lot of bowl blanks and I thought I'd give her a bowl probably this Christmas and um, have a little memory from that tree and maybe even a spoon so when you're going to make a spoon it actually is in your favor to use wood that was recently cut down because it still has the wetness or the dampness of a tree that's just sawn down. Trees are like 30% moisture content, 30% water. 
when they're initially cut down. So they need to go through this drying process. Now you can let them dry a little bit, but if it's in the log, it takes a while. So I just split these logs up and then I chunked it into pieces about an inch and a quarter thick, maybe an inch and three eighths thick. And then I cut it a length and I initially just drew a spoon on there that I liked and it ended up being like this. Okay. So this has got a nice big kind of lobe on there and I just felt it out like how big I thought it should be. But it ends up being about two and a quarter, two and three eighths across and then overall length is 11 and a half. But I noticed that that other spoon I showed you was like 12. So right around there would work. That's the top view of the spoon. The side view is like this. So we're going to have a little more motion going on here. Mm -hmm. We're not going to have any stinking straight spoon. But in order to get that amount of curvature, you've got to have a thicker blank. So these were kind of rejects because of this knot and maybe I could get one out of there. I had to watch for end checks pretty heavily on this. I could probably get a spoon right out of here. You know, that would work. Stay away from that knot. But I'm trying to watch the grain and see that it's linear and doesn't compromise the handle. You know, I want that grain to be pretty straight right in the handle. And if it's fairly straight around the, the bowl, it'll be more um, agreeable to carving out. Okay, so here's a piece that I did already chunk out and I sized up. I can see kind of some curvature in the grain. See how it kind of curves a little bit. So I do want to think about that a little. I don't have the advantage of one of those big bends, but I'm not. So the grain, you can see it rise up a little and then down. And if we look on the other side, we have the same kind of thing. So that's telling me more than likely that grain is flowing that way. So I'm going to go along with it and put my side view on there following that for the handle. Okay. So I'm just going to hold this here and get a profile of our spoon. Here's what I'm doing. I'm just drawing the top of our profile. Okay. So I'm going to take this away. I made little end marks to mark the end of it because what we're going to do first is just saw that top and then we're going to dish out the spoon area while we still have a flat base. Okay, we'll come back and saw that out after we've dished out the spoon. That's the big, uh, the more complicated part of this is scooping that out. So if we can do that with it stable and block-like, we're good to go. Harder woods make for better spoons, like maple is a, is a better spoon. You wouldn't really want to use pine. It's kind of absorbent, soft. It's going to dent and, and soak in more. I guess it's unavoidable that it's going to soak in some of the foods. Um, I often wonder about the sanitary nature of that. If anyone has a comment about wooden utensils in the kitchen, I mean, historically, they were used all the time. You know, I've had to think about this when gluing up for an end grain cutting board. We had this little discussion, and um, I was assured by the Type Bond people that Type Bond 3, when cured, is food safe, as well as the other PVA glues that they make. So um, I don't think it'd be a big issue, but heat does uh, plasticize glue at a certain temperature. So the white plasticizes earliest and then the yellow and then the type on three. Personally, I don't think it's worth such a small object gluing it up. It's, I mean, you want to I'd like to see a beautiful piece of wood rather than a glued up, but that's totally up to you. I know people do it. All right, so here we go. This is our scoop section. I'm just going to saw out this top line and then we'll get to making our scoop area. Here, we're going to just use this little bandsaw right here. And I don't have the dust collector set up, but it's okay. We'll just... Lee's asking why, why not... Uh Mark the side bottom also, but just cut, don't cut it. I'm not sure exactly where my bowl, you know, I want to make sure everything goes well with the top and then I'll be able to just set it on there and correct for any variations I might create here. So that's a good question though. 
If I trusted myself, I would. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, here we go. I'm gonna just smooth this out really quickly. Just clean up that bandsaw marks a little bit. Any American hardwoods that you know that are not food safe, Tom? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I'm not usually thinking about food safety. Bruce suggests hemlock is not a good one. It is good? Is not. Uh, not. Yeah, you, I wouldn't want to use an open poured wood, something harder, and it's nice to use something that carves easily, like basswood, but basswood isn't terribly hard either. I have read where some people talked about willow being a nice wood, or if, you know, somebody's pruning apple trees, apple wood is awesome, and it, it, there's a lot of real kind of gnarly, spindly kind of twists and turns to applewood branches. So if you're around an orchard in there trimming, it's a good time to get spoon material, you know? <laughs> Somebody see you and say, Do you oh. know how much, how, how wet that wood is, Tom? How wet it is? Yeah. Um, I don't really, but it's, it was, uh, it had been cut for a while, but because it was still in log form, I can still f feel the moisture and I could see it a little bit when I cut through there, but it's not super wet. It, it will dry out pretty soon. Like all the ends were pretty heavily checked. So it was on its way to drying, but it wasn't even ready for them to burn as firewood. So they were happy to do the trade, as was well, I. You started with the spoke shave and then we went to the rasp. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I should be talking about this more, right? It's okay. I'm, I'm just working. Lots uh, of questions. So. Yeah, I'm using a spoke shave, the Stanley number 151. I like to clean up typically uh, after bandsawing with that. And then where I had that little tight corner, I couldn't get the spoke shave in there. I just hit it quickly with my number 50 Nicholson rasp and then card scrape to clean it. All of these are uh, linked in the description below if you're curious for those. Yeah, we got links to all the tools, um, various tools I'm using. Maybe not the exact brands, but uh, yeah. All right, there we go. Now let's bring over our spoon. So we want to draw our top view on here. So let's, let me get the length about right. Here's my little tick mark. I was thinking I would be about here from the side view. So here's where we'll just roughly center this. I don't know how much of this process I'll be able to show you tonight, but um, we're going to just take it far enough. And I do have one I did earlier, so we can at least put some finish on one and see see what it's like. You know, once you make the spoon, you know it's, it's going to dry out nicely. You don't want to actually, obviously, um, include the pith of the tree or the branch in the spoon because that'll be a hole and plus it's very unstable around the pith because it's circular and it wants to crack. Okay, there we go. Hard to kind of see some of that line. But this is just 
as a guideline for me to dish it out, okay? Because I'm going to dish out in this area, and this is where it's a little bit freehand, and I'm going to try to leave a margin over here of a skinny eighth, you know, around there, and then sand it, and then we'll saw out. So let's get to scooping it. Okay, right there. And let's get the clamps on. I'll put one up high here. You know, this is the kind of thing that makes a nice gift, too, at Christmas time. Now we're going to scoop this out. And for this, you want to have some type of gouge. I've got a couple different carving gouges here. Um, this a variety that you can use. Basically, you're thinking more about the sweep than the shape. You can get these bent uh, style gouges. They have a nice curvature. It makes it a little easier to get in and scoop. They're especially useful if you've got a really deep bowl. Okay, so if you were doing like a, a deep like measuring cup or something, it'd be good to have a bent uh, carving chisel. For this style, you can get away with a straight one pretty well because it's actually, because it's got that bevel on the outside of the sweep, you can scoop pretty well with it using that bevel. And so I've got two here. I'm working with a number five sweep. That just describes the strength of the curve over a 30 millimeter width. And the second one I'm going to use is a number seven sweep. So that's a stronger curvature. So the seven is a little stronger curve or sweep. And it's only over 20 millimeters wide. Okay. First one's 530. Second one is 720. So that's what those numbers mean. All right. So we're going to just start here. Now, the grain we know is running fairly parallel here with the surface here. So we're going to have to come at it from both directions, always coming downhill. I can't go right on out the other side. I can come from the side as well, but let's go ahead and see how it goes. I'm going to start with the 530 and just scoop it right in there like it's taking a nice little bite out. See that? And then we'll come back the other way. And little by little, you get these things to release. So, in pretty short order, you can have a little dish going. And this is the kind of thing you can do with a power grinder. You know, those ArborTech and some of these other tools. It looks like a a mace, is that the right word? The ball with the uh, points on it. Um, you can put it in a, a drill or, I'm not sure, the Arbortech, I think it runs in a, a grinder. But you know, they're, they're kind of, they work well, but they're hard to control. And you know, it takes you, it takes you away from the work a little bit. Anytime you put a motor and a spinning tool, I mean, yeah, you can do it maybe a little faster, but you're going to have less control in mo most cases and less enjoyment. And if the power goes out, I'm still working. <laughs> right? Are you dishing by eye or to pre a preset depth? Huh? Uh, by eye. Because I'm such an experienced spoon maker. <laughs> no, actually, I'm just feeling my way along here. I'm letting the sweep now starts to define the bowl. But I want to go... You, so you could stop once you have a shallow kind of sweep here. But as you get deeper with these wider chisels, you start to compete with the corners wanting to dig in. So that's why I have the other one. I'm going to have to go to that in a minute. But it's carving kind of nicely because it's it's a little damp. The, the wetness of it will make it more friendly to carving. Now, you can use the mallet. I like this 20 ounce mallet, carving mallet. We put a link to one of these two. Uh, they're not cheap. They 
gotten a lot more expensive since I got this one. But any mallet will do. You can even hand make your mallet. All right, so I just kind of roughly went. You can see I'm not evenly close to the line, but that's okay because I'm going to get better with this one. So here I'm going to just use it more by hand. I don't need the mallet here. I'm just scooping. It's almost like scooping ice cream. It's that much fun. So you can make guidelines, but I'm just looking. I'm looking for kind of symmetry inside my lines down here. And just have some fun with it. I can only go so far, and then I feel the resistance of it wanting to tear. So I got to step to the other side. Okay. You can come around this side if you want. You know, we can switch places. It's okay. I'm good. Okay. If you came over here, I could flick those chips on you. <laughs> this reminds me of a project that Pug had in the shop once where he... I think we repaired it, uh, but it was a, an old game table he had made, and it was it had this nice felt or leather cloth in the middle, maybe it was felt, and then around the at different places on the round table, there were spots for six people to sit. There were these little dished out walnut wells that were set into the table, like so you had table height. And then you had it dished like this, but they were about that large, you know? And I'm not much of a, a gambler, at least don't tell the cam camera lady, uh, but I think those were for the money chips. Somebody, somebody straighten me out there. Uh, isn't that true? Tom, when you talked about uh, apple wood, did you include crab apple in that? I'm not sure about crab apple. I think normally of, of, you know, eating apple type trees. We have a lot of orchards around these parts here in New England that are amazing in the fall. But uh, I was thinking of those trees because we see those a lot around here. And, and when did you cut this cherry up, do you recall? I did not cut it, but I think, let's see. It was cut probably last last summer or spring maybe, but they were big logs, you know, so they they held some moisture. All right, so I'm going to come both ways here, almost to where I want to stop. I'm just trying it now that I've got this. See, I'm I'm a little ragged at the bottom, so you've got to work to blend those fibers where you were coming downhill. They want to tear, so you can come in from the side and just work around. You know, a light cut is going to tell you what's happening, and then and then you can make your cut a little more confidence. That's the 720, Tom, or 720? Yeah, this 720 is a 720. Chisel. Okay. I went to second. Seven slash 20, right? Yeah, it's a seven sweep. 20 millimeter width. That's what it means. There are numbers on the body of these. These are the Swiss made or file. Begins with a P, the uh, Swiss word for it. So I just want to even out my lines, get a little closer to my pencil line, a little more even. That looks like a pretty good dish, huh? Think that'll work for a spoon? Beautiful. So now I'll just feel for any bumps, un unruly bumps here. And I'm gonna smooth it out with a sander, sanding process and a scraper. Okay, so let's just get, that's good enough. I think we're good here. Pretty clean. Let's use this little guy. This is actually, um, you can use this for sanding bowls on the lathe. It's got a nice cushion, and it's a little disc that has the hook and loop on here. 
and I don't I haven't used this that much but I found it came in pretty handy here so here I'm gonna hold it and just get it started in there oh sorry <laughs> collision okay that got pretty smooth but you can also use the card scraper and you're going to use a French curve here so this is sharpened just like a straight card scraper it's a little trickier but um, it if you need to clean off any low spots or any problem areas and you can actually get by just by card scraping. I just went right to the sander there, but I could have done this first. But the sander is pretty, pretty nice. It does a pretty nice job. I'm not sure what grit paper I have on there, but it's, it feels like it feels like about 150. One, a worn 150. <laughs> Okay, so come that way and you can form the dish a little stronger with this curve. So just by rolling it, you can get to the, the, the optimal sweep for what you're trying to clean up. So watch, I've got this tear right here. I'm going to sweep down. See, it's, it's leaving. It's where I had like fibers tore out. So I'd rather control getting after that with this a little and then come back in with the sander. Did we do an episode on sharpening the curved card scraper? I feel like we did. I feel like we did too. Um, but look. yeah, it's very similar. Um, you put a link to it maybe later? Yeah, I'll, I'll find it. If, if we have one, I'll add it. Let me... Yeah, let's look for it. I can look here. Okay, so we're going to sweep right around and get a sweep right around and get a nice looking bowl going right there. That's Did you ever nice consider thing. just leaving it uh, with the marks rather than smoothing it out? You could leave the marks if you want that more natural, but I'm thinking of like cleaning it if you're actually using it. That's pretty cool. Then we'll take um, 220 and just get in here and clean up any areas that are you can't really reach up inside that edge. You see, we've we've created a nice dish out for our spoon. It's like a good. Uh, it feels like a good spaghetti sauce spoon, right? <laughs> Is that what you're thinking? There was some conversation about what pasta type of spoon and sauce. Yes. <laughs> earlier from a couple of what seemed to be Italian gentlemen with their <laughs> names. There's got to be, a, yeah, there's got to be a proper shape and depth for this. You could definitely get a good taste of whatever you're making. That's a good dish, right? So once we've got the dish set up, now I'm going to just reestablish my lines. Let's get our, out of the vise. Mm. So I've come very close to the edge there which is fine. This is where I'm going to just redefine. I want to stay off this pencil line. I'm going to, I'll make it in pen now so that um, I can see it better on the bandsaw. I'll probably leave the line and just clean it off at the end. Okay, here we go. Did you sharpen those chisels today, Tom? Uh, no, I actually had them put away. The second one I used was better condition than the, the first one. Okay, so there we go. We've got our spoon, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna go ahead and bandsaw out to this. I can still shape the bowl after I've cut it out, but um, that's where we go. Now, before I cut this top profile, I'm going to finish with the side view. So let's go ahead and get our 
side view back on there. Did you ever give any thought to putting a metal handle onto a wooden spoon? I have not. <laughs> I abhor metal wood. <laughs> no, I do. I don't mind some metal decoration, but I mean, this whole thing is about the spirit of the wood, you know? Mm. Um, so I'm not thinking metal it's here. possible, for sure. But All right, so I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and cut this profile first, and then we'll be able to cut part of this out, and we'll proceed. So we've got our profile cut. There's our spoon. But now we're going to cut for the base. Now, I'm going to just go up to the neck here so I can have still more material here flat to work the shape. The underside now, we're going to be rounding the underside of the bowl area. So let's go ahead and bandsaw that up to about the neck here. All right, so I'm going to put this in the vise. There's a lot of ways to hold this. You know, you can decide whether it's better to clamp it to the bench. I'm going to try holding it like this. See, now we're starting to see our spoon rise up out of that block of wood. Just like Michelangelo saw the statue of David. Well, maybe it's a little different. <laughs> 
Sort of. It's the same principle. All right, so we're going to just smooth the bottom and just kind of clean up those bandsaw marks again. And here's where I can decide, you know, how thin to go and really finesse this, but I'm, I'm not going to try to get too cute with it, like really thin. I just want to go through the process. And then down this way. But, you know, if you go a little too thin and you see through the bottom, I'm definitely not risking that right now. You, uh, you're going to make a spoon like that first one I showed you. It's going to be a strainer, whatever they call it. Okay, now I'm just going to clean up the side so you can do this with a lot of different... You could rasp this. I'm just trying to smooth everything out a little bit. You could come in with a rasp if you prefer here. Especially in that neck, it gets tight. I'm over this way now. Okay, so once we've got that, let's take a look. <laughs> now we've got a little more hungry. cleaned up shape. But we've got these sharp corners here, so we need to remove all of that. So. <coughs> This is similar to any time we shape something, we want to round it over. It's not the kind of thing you're going to throw a, um, a router at. So we'll come across here and just say, all right, this is where we definitely don't want to go beyond. We're going to round over to about this point, all the way around our bowl. Okay. And then... Let's say we want to, let's get approximately the mirror of this up here. So this is going to come up. This is like the, the apex of the curve as it comes up. Actually, we want the very bottom of our curve to be this center point here. So let's find the middle of the bowl, over the top. It's right about here. Okay, so we're rounding this whole thing to that point there. So we, if we can cut just a facet off of here quickly, it'll speed things along. So let's just come about to this point. It's about two thirds. I'm going about two thirds of the distance between here and the line. And then I think that line is pretty close, but let's make this a little bit shorter. And over here, again, two-thirds. And flip it around. So these are just guidelines. So now I want to chamfer off those there. So let's go ahead. Here I can take what I sawed off earlier Remember when I sawed that curve earlier? That was the front curve. I took, I kept the sawn off piece. That will work as a nice little cradle to hold it flat. You gotta get a real good grab on it here. And now I just want a flat chisel. It's just a nice straight three quarter inch. And here we're thinking about the grain. I'm going to sit down for change. And we're going to just come from this direction and try to just get that chamfer established. Take light cuts so you know what the grain is doing before you go too crazy because you could lop off more than you intended. Yeah, same thing. 
Hey, is there any fixing that squeaky sound on the vice? What squeaky sound? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I gotta get some oil. I think oil you've on just it. become too accustomed to it. <laughs> someone is someone annoyed? No, no one's annoyed. Who was that? Your question? Was that a question? It's just it's just something that I think we should probably tend to. Don't oh. you think? Yes, of course. <laughs> it is pretty alarming sound. <laughs> Let's see. Don't do it. <laughs> I don't hear any squeak. <laughs> don't do it when you don't have to. Now, when you're chiseling like this, it's almost like a, you're holding it back with this hand. That's how you control it. It's like a weird fight between your two hands. This one's hitting it forward, and the other one's holding it back. So that's the way it is when you're, you're in tension, and you get a nice control that way. All right, I took a lot off there. I hope I'm not making my bowl too, too thin, but I don't think so. This kind of makes quick work of it. And then we can come back this way. Same thing. You could reposition it, of course, but for sake of time. And then when you get to an inside cut like that, if you flip it over with the bevel down, it allows you to roll the chisel and exit the cut where you can't really do that with bevel side up. The flat is just going to want to keep digging in, right? So Why not use a stationary belt sander? Um, you could do some stuff with a belt sander here, but I mean, I don't know, I just like the control of this. If you take a belt sander to this, yeah, you could. I, I don't know. It just depends how what you're comfortable with. That's sort of like for flat material. This you'd be trying to come on a chamfer and do sculptural work with the. It's not impossible, but it's whatever you're comfortable with, really. I just like the. You can get pretty fast with this too. We're removing a lot of material here, so. It's not really sanding time, but it will be very soon. So then you want to hit it with the spoke shave again. And using the guidelines, you can go pretty quickly to just create that facet. Okay, that's going to speed you along. Let's get this off. So we're starting to look a little more like a spoon. But still not quite there yet. I'm just going to accelerate the end of this. But the spoke shave will help refine what you did with the, the flat chisel. And you can look right down on it and see the symmetry of the facets from the top like this. And then I can come in this way. <laughs> Try not to breathe in the mic when I'm <laughs> really working. Okay, so. Once we get it pretty nice like that, I'm not going to go crazy with it. You can do a secondary mark here. So now this is the apex. This is probably the new apex of the arc. Okay, so we, that's the new line. There's another new line over here. And the center here is the apex. So now I can just take... I could make more guidelines if I wanted to that would say I want to 
because I'm cutting off the peak of this these two facets now. So let's just do it by eye. I'm just on the peak. And I'll do this one. I'm just going to come over till I hit that pencil line. I'm holding it in a facet first. See the grain shifts right there, so I got to come this way. Go down. All right, so once I get that in shape, I'm not going to go crazy with it, but then I can refine the shape with with the uh, rasp. Let me just knock this off. Are you thinking this. quarter or 316 wall thickness? Um, this is a little, probably more than that right in the middle. I would go, it depends. I don't have one of those gauges, like there's these gauges you can squeeze here and it shows you out here exactly how wide your depth is. It's a thing with, on, um, turners use it a lot when they're turning bulls so they can see the edge and see the thickness of it as it moves in unison with that. So I can feel I'm um, probably about a quarter right there, but I get it thicker in the middle. So I could make this thinner, but I don't know if you if you're going to use it, it could be a weapon in your drawer. So if you keep it heavy, <laughs> you never know. You're going to need it. All right. So then we'll go down this way, just knocking off the facets. There we go. Okay, so let's look at it. You can see that we've done some nice sculptural work there, and we've got our bowl on the other side. But you can see that that's heavier than it needs to be, but not too much. Then I would go from this point to the rasp. And here's a Nicholson rasp. It's a random kind of um, surface. The, the teeth are very random and it makes for a beautiful cutting tool. This is the number 50, so it's a little gentler. You can get the 49, or there's other rasps too that they can get pricey though. Um, but you don't want the kind of rasp with all the teeth in, the, in a row. The random placement makes them much more effective and a pleasure to work with. So by looking down on the top, you can really look for the symmetry. And I would go ahead and get this bowl all set up and cleaned up before the last step of cutting the handle. Let me just do a quick kind of crude job. I won't totally refine it, but you'll get the idea. Okay, and then we could come in with the, um, the smaller eight inch file this we've also put a link to this it's got a coarse side you know rounded and I just use the flat coarse to start out this takes away those those rasp marks pretty well Tom will the spoon split as it dries or does the finish take care of that um, this is dry enough I'm not worried about it splitting but if you were I would put it in a paper bag for a few days while once you get it shaped, if you put it in a paper bag for a few days, it'll more slowly transition and let out that moisture. You can also put some shavings in the bag, some wood shavings. It just acts to help slow down the transfer. That's if you're with a really wet spoon. 
I'm not really worried about this. But, so you can see, then I would go to the fine side and then I would take my card scraper Go right around up here. It's you got to pull it toward you. And then this is where one of those little palm sanders, those little square ones that have a cushion on the bottom, they work really well for this kind of thing. And I won't go all the way with that, but we'll take this. So of course I'd go a little more with each of those steps to refine and clean that up nicely to the line and clean that up so you can see you're getting the spoon is emerging. Then we'd go back to the bandsaw, which we're not going to do right now in this, but it's pretty much the same. We were just bandsaw straight down there, clean it up with a spoke shape on the sides and then make our index marks for rounding over the handle and a little curvature on the end and we would round under the handle and then soften it up and break and get a nice feeling and you will have a spoon like this huh mm, look at beautiful. that this is like a jethro uh breakfast cereal spoon so <laughs> same same pattern yeah. but this is a little more rushed <laughs> but you can see how sculptural it is and then the side view how nice it is let's look at that store-bought one you got the difference quite a difference in style right mm -hmm. for and you can you can make these however you want you can make them a longer handle uh, of course the the ladle now the ladle i think would work best with that type of curved tree branch or something but let's put a little mineral oil on here and see what it looks like. You'll have to take your mineral oil, Tommy. <laughs> Do I have to? All right, so then we let this saturate in. Oh, look at that beautiful cherry grain. Mm. So cherry is a nice, nice wood for spoons. Start to get that pretty color coming up. And I would saturate this a few times. Once you get a feeling with the hand tools, you know, it's a nice way to learn to use hand tools, but if you already have that feeling before you make these, it's, it's a real joy, you know? You just have fun with it. Wow. So it's beautiful, and like you can imagine, you can have your own little signature design. You can carve something in the handle, make it a little wider if you like, longer of course, um, different shaped bowls. But that has a nice healthy dished out bowl for tasting, wouldn't you say? Yeah, sure looks, makes me hungry <laughs> Look at, for... That's like some pretty tight grain and almost quarter sawn there, so you have that little circle on the side. A lot of character to that spoon. So wouldn't this be a sweet gift to someone, you know, especially if it was made from the tree in the backyard? And I think I'll give my uh, sister for sure at least a spoon like this from that tree and surprise her. Uh, the depth of the bowl when I carved it was just over a half inch deep in the, in the full middle. And like I said, you need material that's about an inch and a quarter at least thick to get that curvature and allow for the 
the bowl. All right, everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us yes. again. What an adventure in spoon making we had tonight. <laughs> Sculptural work and hand tool work. Thanks for nice, quiet, in. enjoyable woodworking. Mm -hmm. Well, remember, if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing, sharing, and liking and commenting, as you will. And head on over to epicwoodworking.com to get on our mailing list and Check out all the stuff we've got available there. We'd love to have you be a part of us. You can really go deeper and join the neighborhood and get all the inside scoop on everything going down. <laughs> inside scoop. Good hey, topic. thanks again for being here. On behalf of the camera lady and myself, we look forward to seeing you next week right back here. Good night. See you next week.